This is The Top, where I interview entrepreneurs who are number one or number two in their industry in terms of revenue or customer base. You'll learn how much revenue they're making, what their marketing funnel looks like, and how many customers they have. I'm now at $20,000 per talk. Five and six million. He is hell-bent on global domination. We just broke our 100,000 unit soul mark. And I'm your host, Nathan Latka. Okay, Top Tribe, this week's winner of the $100 is Zach Ferran. He's a 22-year-old Apple employee, and he's listening to the show and loving it. For your chance to win 100 bucks every Monday, simply subscribe to the podcast on iTunes now, and then text the word Nathan to 33444 to prove that you did it to enter. Top Tribe, you know I don't have a lot of time to waste. But that's why I use FreshBooks to send out invoices and make sure I'm collecting my money. To get your free month, go to NathanLatka.com forward slash FreshBooks and enter the top in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Nathan Latka here. This is episode 560. Coming up tomorrow morning, you'll learn from Ken Marlin. He did $1 billion with a B in 2016 transactions at his M&A firm, Marlin & Associates. They take on average 3%, so you can do the math. They made a lot of money. Nathan Latke here. Good morning, everybody. Our guest today is Steven Benson. He's the founder and CEO of Badger Maps, the number one sales app in the Apple App Store, which helps field salespeople be more successful. Badger shows salespeople, their customers, and leads on a map and connects to their calendar to build daily routes. Steven, are you ready to take us to the top? Yes, I am. All right. Good, good, good. So tell us about Badger. And by the way, do you go by Badger Maps or Badger Mapping or just Badger? Um, you know, Badger Maps usually. All right. So tell us what Badger Maps does and how you make money. Sure. So what Badger does is we help field salespeople with their jobs. Um, we, uh, it's called Badger Maps originally because it, it, the, uh, the original thought was that field salespeople needed to be able to view their territory and activities and schedule on a map when they, when they go out into the field every day. And it's really, you know, it started from that, from that base and, and, and solving that set of problems and then grew from there to, to now to really trying to do a lot of things for, for the field salesperson and make their, their day go better and more efficiently. And what, how do you make money? Are you a SaaS model or what? Yes, uh, we're a, a, a SaaS model, so it's a, a monthly service. It's uh, 18 and 35 or $66 a month. Okay. So. And give me an average just so we can be more clear. What's the average customer pay you per month? Um, average is, uh, probably $35 a month. Okay. Very cool. All right. So take us back. What year did you found the business in? 2012. Actually, uh, today is, Jan is uh, January 4th, 2017. And the business was started on January 5th, 2012. Oh, so. very cool. <laughs> Three year anniversary, right? We're popping champagne this morning. Five. Well, 2012 <laughs> oh, sorry, 2017. Five year. Five year. Sorry. Five year. <laughs> All right, and what did you? Um, are you the sole co-founder, or do you have a team? Uh, we, I've, we've had a team uh, from the beginning. There were uh, there, there are three co-founders, um, and, uh, and and so we've we've all always. Uh, I guess we we've, we've we've always been really close and worked together very uh, we worked together uh, around the clock, and and uh, and. and and it's been a, a great ride so far. Did you uh, did you guys just split equity thirty three thirty three thirty three? Um, not exactly, uh, but uh, but that's that's one way to do it. How did you? A lot of people listening, they they try and figure out how to split equity with founder. So it's a valuable lesson. How did you guys have that conversation? Well, I think uh, you know the when, when you're splitting up equity, I guess the the key the key pieces is that everyone gets a gets a fair deal but also different people have different things that are driving them at the time so um some people want more money and 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 uh and salary and ability to make money up front and other people are are more comfortable being paid in a more uh i guess equity heavy um uh comp package so yep. that's kind of the 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 trade the, the main trade off is are people spending all their time with it um Will they, and, and then, uh, I guess the, another major thing to consider is, um, is not, not giving people equity, um, not giving people equity in such a way that a founder vests over 
the same, the same way as an employee would, meaning an employee, you know, you, standard is for them to invest over four years, right? So uh, I would actually, uh, I would, I would, I think it's better with, with founders to not give them, give them their full package vesting over. So are over you guys all on four year vesting then or no? Um, we are, but this is more of a learning from, uh, a learning for me that I would do it differently. So, um, the, the way I would suggest would be a better way to do it is take a small slice of it. Like the, uh, the amount that you would give like an early VP or, or, or someone who's, who's, who's high up in the organization, but not, not a founder and give them and, and invest that portion over four years and then have the rest vest at, uh, Vest upon change of control or you know, purchase uh, liquidity because that then. Oh, so you guys don't have an accelerator clause. If you got an acquisition offer today and you guys weren't fully vested, you don't have an accelerator. No, no, no. I would say you do. We, we do. We do. And, and that's, that's, you should do that. But I'm saying best a nice chunk of it. So let's just say you had three founders, right? Um, well, for simplicity's sake, let's just say you had two. So if you had two, two founders, you should both vest like two and a half percent over, over, uh, over the course of four years, but then you should both vest 40% upon change of control. And what that basically does is mean you're in this for the long term, And if you, you you're welcome to walk, but you leave, uh, you leave oh, most see. of your equity on the table. Yeah, I see. I see. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. Take us back more, more memories from that first year, five years ago. Do you remember what your first year revenue was? <laughs> for sure, <laughs> revenue. Oh man, uh, it, it it was. I don't. I, it would it would probably have been around forty thousand dollars. I would guess. Oh, we did a, we did a little bit of consulting that first year too. So maybe seventy thousand. Okay, so seventy grand. And then, um, okay, so let's say, let's pull a story forward now. So five years later, uh, it's January twenty seventeen. Here, how many customers are you serving today? Um, I'd say around 4,000. Okay. And, um, is the math that, I mean, can I do 35 ARPU times 4,000 customers to get a general sense of your, of your MRR about 140 um, grand? Yeah. Yeah. You can do that. That's accurate. Okay. And how do you, so you, you're pretty bold on your website. You said the number one sales up in the app store. What number are you measuring where you can, you know, you, you, you feel good saying you're the number one app. Um, the, that actually came from the, from Apple, the, uh, they had their sales apps, uh, stack ranked in terms and, 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 I, and I'm actually not sure how their algorithm does this, but we were the, we were the top one when you, when they were, they, uh, and they actually just stopped doing this with their new up with their new update where they had sales broken out as a category. Mm -hmm. I assume they're going to bring it back, but they, they had business apps and then sales apps and we were the top one. Um, in, in the sales apps oh, for, great. for about a year and a half That's you know, great. until they, until they got rid of the concept of, of, uh, of sales of as, ranking, one their, yeah. as, as one of their ranking types. So <laughs> now, you know, and they're, uh, so it was, it was pretty, it was pretty specific. It was, you know, was apps for sales and, and we were, we were the top one. Hey, were, I'm just, I just want to, so a lot of people throw that stuff up there. There's nothing to back it up. So you passed the test, Apple, Apple ranked <laughs> it. You're good to go. Take us through more of the, take us through more of the unit economics. So 4,000 customers using are these, are these 4,000 individual field sales reps or companies with multiple field sales reps? Um, could be either. So we, we have fortune 500 companies using Badger that are, uh, that are using it for their whole their whole field sales team. Sorry. My question um, was that 4,000 number you gave me, is that number of companies or number of reps inside all the companies? Um, it's both. So that's, that's, I guess, transactions. And so one, some of them could be 250 reps. Others could be one rep. Oh, I see. Okay. Got it. Okay. makes good sense. Um, and then talk to my, talk to me about some of the other economics, gross customer monthly churn. What's that at? Um, I think it was at, uh, it actually popped up a little bit this last month, I think because people were cleaning up their books, but uh, I guess we average around 3.3%. Okay. And then what do you talk to me about acquisition? You guys are doing a great job, obviously acquiring customers. How are they finding you? Um, in, so we, the, the most, the, the biggest way they find us is, is through, is through, uh, just word of mouth. That's, that's the, the, we track that as being our, our, the best way that we find people. Second best is, uh, is SEO. 
Uh, third best is SEM. Got it. And what are you willing to spend to acquire a new customer? Um, I guess it depends on the, it, it, it depends on the, the, uh, the, the marketing venue. So, I mean, I, I kind of use Google as the benchmark. And so most in Google search uh, SEM is the bench, benchmark for, for what I'm willing to spend to acquire. And so everything else always ends up, ends up seeming really expensive to me by comparison. Um, so we actually, you know, we, we do have like things like retargeting and that's, that's reasonable. Uh, Steven, Facebook add, has add never it, it all for us. Add it all up for me though. So like in, in a given month, like last month, what'd you guys spend total on paid marketing? Oh, um, it's a good question. Probably about 12 grand. Okay. All right. So about 10% uh, of revenues. Yeah. Got it. And what is the, like how many, again, if we now divide that by the number of new customers it, it brought you, what's your average customer acquisition cost? Um, I'm not sure. The, um, the, 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 uh, it, I, it, it's different. It's different depending on different uh, different venues. Well, so so if in, in Google, it would be way different than if it was SEO. So what was Google? Um, I think Google's around three hundred dollars. Okay, and you said that's that's your that's always the cheapest one typically. That's the cheapest of the paid. The yep. the majority of ours are free. Is the trick so. Yep. Um, that, that's why, like I was saying, mo most marketing things don't pencil out, uh, from my perspective. I mean, you know, you, you can, uh, most, if, if you were a venture funded business, then you, you, you generally feel pretty good about spending, um, up to the lifetime value or up to one year's value of the customer to, to acquire a well, customer. Not up to lifetime value up to one year, maybe not lifetime though. Right. <laughs> well, I wouldn't, but you must be I in San Francisco. You must be in San Francisco. Are you in San Francisco? Uh, I am. Of yes. course you are. Okay. <laughs> Only in San Francisco are they spending 100% of lifetime value on acquisition. Usually it's yeah, one to that, three. Well, I think when people are, are growing really quickly, I mean, I, I hear people throw around crazy numbers all the time and, and it's not the way I think about it, but um, I think if you, it, it, people get themselves in situations where I think the, the, the growth is more important than the, than the unit economics and growth is more important than everything. Than a, a lot of the Yeah. And, and, and if, and if you think about it, if, if someone dumps, a, you know, an, an almost infinite no amount of money in your head and says the, the thing that I really care about is growth, probably you're going to think of a way to, uh, to, to get the growth, even if it yep. doesn't make a ton of sense. Have you guys raised capital or are you bootstrapped? We're bootstrapped. Wait, why did I feel like you guys had raised capital? Didn't you raise like 125 K in debt in May last year? Um, yeah, debt, but that, I mean, sorry. Would, so convertible notes like debt, sorry. I meant funding in terms of debt or equity funding. Yeah. So we, well, we didn't do that. That wasn't convertible, convertible notes. That was a traditional loan. Um, well, that was with lighter. So lighter capital, is that how they operate? They just give out loans. Right. Well, they, they're, uh, they're actually a really cool. Anyone that has a SaaS business, they're a really cool way of, uh, of, of, getting debt in your books and, and when you're too small of a company for a bank to really want to play. And what is, so tell us about that real quick. That sounds valuable. Sure. Uh, so uh, to get, to give the quick lighter capital pitch, um, yeah. they, they basically are a fund and, and my understanding is they've been growing pretty quickly. They really focus on making loans to SaaS companies and, you know, to, to give a SaaS business that's got a, you know, a, a recurring revenue of whatever, whatever they're looking for, the loans are pretty safe to give a, a, a SaaS business of a certain size. They can see the money coming in on a monthly basis. What interest are you paying uh, on the money you raised? Um, I think, I think it was like 22, 23%. Got it. And did it require a personal guarantee or no? No, they didn't. Interesting. So those, that's the valuable. So like a bank is like maybe 10% and they require a personal guarantee. VCs want like a hundred, uh, you know, a hundred percent return. Lighter capital is kind of in the middle, 20% annual return, no personal guarantee. Um, well, yeah, I, I, I don't know if I'd say VCs want a hundred percent return, but, but, uh, but that's they, their target. They, I, I, I'd say their targets to three to 10 X their money. Um, uh, but that's equity, right? It's different than, uh, than it's different than, than a, than a loan yep. where you're just paying a set interest rate. 
Got it. Okay, good. That's helpful. Um, let me round out here. So last question before I jump into the famous five. Um, 20, what was total? I imagine you're doing 140K right now. So what you guys, did, did you break, call it 1.2 million in 2016? Total revenue? Total revenue? Um, yeah, yeah. It was actually right around there. 1.2? 1, 1. Yeah. Okay. And what's your goal uh, for 2017? Um, in terms of, uh, ARR, I'd like to see it at five. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so five, yeah, five million. Then, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd take four and a half though. Yeah. <laughs> rather, ha rather have it be six, but I'd take four and a half. <laughs> yeah. So you're at, you're at 140 MRR now to get to a $5 million ARR. You've got to get to about 416 grand in December, 2016 total revenue. So you're like almost doubling or, or tripling the business. That's your goal, right? Yeah. Okay, Top Tribe, as many of you know, I sold Hayo, and everyone is always asking me what my expenses were when I was building Hayo. Well, a big expense was that I spent over three grand per month on financial services to keep me out of trouble in terms of taxes. You know, my mom would always harbor me, Nathan, you gotta keep all your receipts and put them in a freaking box or something to make sure you don't get an audit or things like this. I'm like, Mom, I'm a millennial. You think I'm gonna keep all these receipts? I now use FreshBooks. I use their mobile app to take a picture of receipts, and it makes taxes a cinch. Additionally, I don't have to hire a $3,000 per month person to manage all my finances. It's like saving so much money, and my mom's happy. Additionally, I don't waste a bunch of time creating invoices. I use their templates, and I can avoid using Word templates or Excel files. I just use FreshBooks to quickly send out invoices, and it works like a charm. To get your free first month, go to NathanLatka.com forward slash FreshBooks and enter the top in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Again, go to NathanLatka.com forward slash FreshBooks and enter the top in the How Did You Hear About Us section. Awesome. Good stuff, man. Well, hey, let's jump into the famous five real quick. Number one, what is your favorite business book? My favorite business book. Um, hmm. That's a good question. I don't know if I have a favorite business what book. What was the last one you read? Um, let's see. The, uh, the last one I read was actually... Uh, was it, I'm trying to think of the 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 new Lemkin book. What is that? Uh, I don't know, but I will look it up and I'll put it in the show the, notes. The uh, oh, it, well, it's uh, I, sh I should I should know what it is. It, it's actually, okay. well, anyway, the, the the book I'm reading right now is called Tools of Titans by uh, by Ferris. Tim you like Ferris. it so far? Uh, I, I I like it so far. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty it, it's it's interesting. It's pretty good. I can't believe I can't remember the, the name of that book. But I just I'll look it up. The, don't the worry about Lincoln it. Book. Well, wow. okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's, it's worth checking out for anyone that run, that's, uh, that's that has a SaaS business. Okay, good. Um, yeah, guys, sure. we'll put we'll put that. I'll look it up. I'll put it in the show notes at uh, at nathanlaka.com forward slash the top five six zero. Um, Stephen, number two, is there a CEO you're mm -hmm. following or studying right now? Not really. Okay, number three, what's your favorite online tool like TopTal? Sorry, like what? Favorite online tool? Um, Bare metrics uh, for a SaaS business, I guess is is that that's the one that I uh, that's the one that I like. Number four, yes or no? Do you get eight hours of sleep every night? <laughs> um, I, I that's actually my uh, one of my big goals of 2017 to to get seven hours of sleep a night. <laughs> I probably average closer to. Well, I get eight hours of sleep on the weekends, but I'm, during the week, I I, I average. Uh, Probably right around five. And what's your situation? Married, single? Do you have kids? I am married. No, no kids? kids. All right. And how old are you? I am thirty-eight. All right. Last question, Stephen. Take us back eighteen years. What do you wish your twenty-year-old self knew? Hmm. I wish that my twenty-year-old self um, had known that you learn a lot more working at small companies than big companies. Cause I, I worked at a string of big companies, um, Allstate, IBM, uh, Autonomy, which uh, HP bought, and, and Google. And um, I, I, I think you learn a lot more working on small teams and small organizations. And I wish that my 20-year-old my self knew that, knew that you would learn that much more working at a small company. I, I, uh, I didn't realize that. 
Guys, there you have it from Stephen Benson. He wishes he worked at smart, a smaller companies. You learn more there. He founded Badger Maps five years ago. In fact, it's his five year anniversary. They're now certain first year revenue. They did about 70 grand, including some consulting last year, 2016. They did about 1.2 million. They're currently serving 4,000 field reps, helping them manage their daily schedules more efficiently. They're paying on average 35 bucks a pop to lead to about 140 grand in monthly recurring revenue, 3.3% gross monthly churn CAC when they do do paid marketing is around 300 bucks again with their team based in san francisco helping making making sales smarter and more efficient for those field sales reps steven thank you for taking us to the top thank you if you enjoyed steven today go back and listen to andrew yesterday Andrew launched JSX Exchange to sell computational power to financial firms. Hey, Top Tribe, I love giving away free money. I feel like Oprah giving away cars, and I have something special for you today. How many of you have heard our super sharp guests talk about success they've had with Facebook and Google Ads? Well, all of you listening right now, yes, if you're listening, you get $100 in free AdWords. Here's how you get it, okay? Again, thanks for listening. Get the free $100 from Google, right, when you sign up with my website host, provider hostgator go sign up now to get your free money hostgator.com forward slash nathan again that's hostgator.com forward slash nathan okay top tribe i'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning and don't forget before you listen to any other episodes subscribe on itunes right now for your chance to win a hundred bucks every monday